Hey, what's up guys? It's your boy Callaway Jones and I am back. A lot of you have been asking me where have I been. I had to go shoot a couple. I've also been shooting a ton of content for the channel, so stay tuned for that. As far as today, I've got a treat for you guys. It is just a crazy time to be alive because people didn't think we'd be alive when the next Avatar came out, but we got our first look in the Avatar 2 teaser trailer. Now, what is a teaser trailer? Because a lot of people, I feel, get this confused with an actual trailer. A teaser trailer just gives you a glimpse at a thing. It's not a full-on trailer. This wasn't meant for you to catch story vibes. This was more or less meant for you to just catch vibes in general. And anyone that knows me knows how big of a fan of Avatar I am. In fact, it is my favorite movie of all time. I'm going to be doing Avatar week next week. So stay tuned for that if you're as big of a fan of Avatar as I am. Next week, I'm going to do a couple of in-depth analysis on everything from James Cameron, his journey to Avatar 2, why I think Avatar 2 could very likely make $3 billion dollars I really do think it's gonna be the first film to break three billion. And I'm going to point out some of the things that Avatar did so well that made it the biggest film in the history of cinema, both financially and via attendance. It's really kind of crazy what's going on with Avatar when you think about it. And you hear all the cries of, well, nobody cares about Avatar anymore. Whether you say you love it or you hate it, you're still talking about it. No one can shut up about this film. So let's go ahead and jump into this Avatar 2 teaser trailer. Oh, and by the way, full disclosure, I did see Doctor Strange opening night and this trailer was attached to it. So I have already seen it once. When it dropped online, I watched it again only once. It is incredible. I wanted to watch it a thousand times. So forgive me if I'm still insanely excited as if it was my first time watching, but I did want to disclose that I've already seen it. So this is not my first reaction, but it is actually my third. Uh, yeah, third reaction, no? Yeah, I did end up watching it twice online. And <laughs> this is my fourth reaction. So welcome to my fourth reaction and let's go ahead and give this thing a watch. Jeez. Uh, that logo. Both of those logos. Jesus Christ. I don't want to comment because I'll comment after. Look at those. I want, <laughs> I want to talk about everything. Oh, this shot right here. Holy hell. And this, oh my god, okay, okay, Michael, shut up, just watch. This, that shot. Someone should talk about Ah, god. Y'all know who that is? Be quiet. Oh, that is just... Ah, this shot right here, holy, look at, look at that, look at that. Okay, stop, Michael. Just shut Whatever up. we go, this family. Ooh. Is our fortress. Uh. <laughs> hey, 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 I am so sorry. I'm, I'm watching it again. I, I, I have to watch it one more time and then we're gonna talk about it. Just one more. Two more. One more right now and then we're gonna talk through it. I am, I'm thoroughly blown away by every single fucking shot.
trailer is honestly orgasmic for me in every single way. <laughs> as a visual effects artist, as an audio designer, as a sound engineer, as a filmmaker, as a director, as an editor, as a colorist. I know one thing. As a storyteller, I'm, I just, I, I, this is just... This family. It's insane. Oh my god, oh my god, bro, bruh, bruh, that sh- Bruh. That shit is so fucking fire. Okay, alright, 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 alright. Alright, let's just talk about everything we just saw because that's just- That was fucking incredible and I don't know- <laughs> It's just the best thing I've ever seen. Alright. All right, first of all, growing up on the 20th Century Fox logo, seeing 20th Century Studios right there, that's already like, it gives me chills because this is, what a lot of people don't know is that during the, so I'm an investor in, in Disney, um, and I remember during one of the calls, uh, because we get these calls where they talk to investors about everything coming up, all this kind of stuff. I remember them calling Avatar the crown jewel of the 20th Century Fox purchase. You gotta think about that. They got back all their Marvel characters that 20th Century Fox had grabbed, everything from X-Men to Deadpool, all these characters, Fantastic Four. But they said that the crown jewel of the purchase is Avatar. Disney's not stupid. These are the guys who won't so much as release a turkey leg in their parks without first testing it with thousands of people and making sure that the turkey leg tastes exactly like a Disney turkey leg. Like you just gotta bite it and, and like, what does it taste like? Mmm, tastes like Disney. Like if you don't, if that's not the reaction, they don't want it. And they call this the crown jewel. So they know what they're doing. Seeing that logo is fantastic. And then obviously seeing James Cameron's logo chills through my body, uh, damn near an orgasm. Let's move on. What a perfect way to get us back into the world of Avatar. Um, now, I know some of the story already, uh, and I'm not going to say, I'm not going to give away any details, but the, the, uh, I'm pretty sure this kid is adopted by Jake and Natiri, and these are the kid's actual siblings over here. Um, I actually think this is the daughter, and this is the son. I'm not sure who this is, and then this is their adopted sibling. Um, but right off the bat, look at how much more detail there is compared to 2009. 2009, that avatar to this day is still, in my opinion, one of the best looking films ever made. However, they used a lot of fog. And this is just me talking as a visual effects artist right now. They used a lot of fog to hide limitations of what they could show back in 2009. And you can see here that the fog is dialed back quite a bit the draw range um, is just much higher on, and much more detailed if you look back there at these mountains back here. Um, and even these textures right here, whereas if you go back and you look at the vines in 2009 and you look up close, it's, you're not gonna see it as pronounced or as uh, bump mapped um, as you can see it here. But anyway, let's, let's move on. Oh, God, this shot, holy, holy cow. This shot is insanity. Um, look at, I just want you to notice when the light flickers over her eye, just watch the detail here as it bounce, the light bounces off of her eyelashes. First of all, look at the lighting right here. These lights right here, in 3D animation, you have to place, now, there's a couple of things that we need to talk about and I don't want to nerd out completely, but um, high dynamic range images, HDRIs are used as a, the easiest way to describe it is imagine a picture that wraps around an entire room. You could then turn a camera in any direction and you'll see that room. And the more clarity you have in that picture, the better you'll be able to see that room. Now, if you've got that happening and light is bouncing off of that, then in shiny objects or reflective objects, you're going to see that 
that room. And what that means is that you can get a digital interpretation of a real place and bounce that off of digital shiny objects and it'll appear as if that is what's bouncing off of that object, that, that digital reinterpretation of the physical world. So what you're seeing in her eyes over here and over here are reflections of the jungle that are being created by the digital uh, copy of the actual location. But in this case, it is Avatar 2. My guess is they're filming in a soundstage and none of this is real, which again, <laughs> what? <laughs> Look at the detail in her braids. Look at the, the age, uh, the age lines in her face. Look, you can see more creases in her lips. Everything's just been, now watch when the light comes through though. Watch her, eye, watch her, uh, her, uh, you know, the lashes. There, um, you see, you see that? <sighs> Those small details are the things that are hitting your brain that you're not paying attention to because it goes by so fast. Your brain isn't really interpreting what it's seeing. All it knows is that because of details like this, it believes that this thing is real. What it's looking at is real. And I mean, look at this fucking image. She's real. That woman exists. <laughs> you cannot convince me that she is not just standing in front of the damn camera right now. That woman exists. Oh my God. Oh my God. One more time, one more time. Look at, watch that eyeball, watch that. Oh. The reflection from her eyelashes off of her eye. Stop it, James. And then, okay, one more time. <laughs> I swear to God, last time. Look at the curiosity on her face. Like they're capturing every single thing happening in the motion capture uh, session. She, she really is curious about whatever it is she's looking at. I mean, this is just, this is a full on performance. Oh my God. <sighs> okay, so a lot of people are like, mm, nobody cares about Avatar. Okay, you think no one cares about Avatar? Go to Disney World in Florida, go to Animal Kingdom, and go get in line in Pandora to get on Flight of Passage. Tell me you don't wait eight hours to get on that fucking ride. And the reason why is because it's literally the best ride on earth. And that's coming from somebody who is a roller coaster nerd. I do plan on doing videos about roller coasters also, so stay tuned for that if you like roller coasters. I'm gonna do a video about Six Flags Magic Mountain and Cedar Point, the greatest thrill ride coaster park on earth. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Back to this. Flight of Passage at Disney World is the best ride on the planet and you cannot convince me otherwise. I've never felt more inside and immersed in a film ever, period. And that thing right there, this, this well creature, whatever this is, if you rode that ride, you've seen one of these before. And it is so cool to see it here in the trailer. Um, also on that ride, you get to ride your very own Banshee. So if you get the chance to get out there, do so. Okay, okay. First of all, he's aging. This is the kind of detail I'm talking about. You see the gray in his hair? Not only is he aging, he's stressed as fuck. <laughs> this isn't just age gray, this is stress gray. And there is a difference. This man is stressed out. Whatever Jake's going through, he is stressed as hell. Um, I'm noticing crazy things too. Look at the veins in his arms. Like these veins in his arms. He's, he's very powerful and you can see all of that. I just, I love that. Look at the translucency, the varying levels of translucency on the dragon's wings. Like, all of this detail is just so fantastic. Ugh, God, tell me that's not paradise. Tell me that is not fucking paradise. And you see the three moons back there? Actually, two moons. I believe this is the planet, because Pandora is not a planet, uh, it's a moon. I believe circling this planet and I believe these are the other two moons in rotation around this planet along with Pandora this is just heaven man also notice 
something is going on here because notice that we can see the base of the roots of these trees. This water level, according to these roots, should be somewhere up here. Look at how it's faded right there. This water should be, the water level should be somewhere around there. Something's going on. Um, very interested to see what, what that's all about. Jesus, that is so beautiful. I love the detail here. These are like, I don't know, so I live in Los Angeles and we go to Palm Springs and we sit in the hot springs. These are, hot, these are basically their version of hot springs here. Like all these little pools of water and you can see a couple of them hanging out and playing and just chilling out in these hot springs. Ah, this shot right here. I mean, they're just living in paradise. Like me, knowing my silly ass, I would have a girlfriend and we'd probably be hanging out on this beach all day saying crazy shit like, what do you think's on that other moon? What do you think's on that other, other moon? We should go to one of the other moons because I'm, I'm ridiculous. <laughs> and it's just cool seeing that, look, they're having a great time. You see his arm up over here. They're just having fun flying around. Um, and you, you've got Jake over here. He's blowing the seahorn. Actually, I felt like they're just having fun flying around, but when I think about it, they might be celebrating something. Usually, if you're blowing a horn like that, it's to get the attention of villagers, whether that can be uh, just calling a meeting, you might be wanting to discuss something, you might be, war it could be a warning, it could be a war cry, um, it could be celebratory. They're celebrating something. There's so many things. And perhaps this is the kids first time out on their banshees. Who knows? But I'm very excited to see it. It's so textured, everything that's going on in this world. And this shot. <sighs> One of the reasons it took them so long to film Avatar 2, because James Cameron invented as he always does he invented new techniques for filming underwater so what you're seeing here this isn't simulation this isn't you know usually as vfx artists we would use houdini uh, real flow some of these other particle renders in order to uh, simulate water and fluid mechanics and all that kind of stuff this is actual motion capture underwater Jim hired the best free divers to teach the cast how to free dive. And in fact, I believe Kate Winslet ended up breaking a world record. She can now free dive um, as, as an actress. Uh, she broke a world record. She can now free dive and hold her breath underwater while performing for seven minutes. That and the mo most of the team, I believe most of the actors were at plus five minutes while they were filming. Jim got them up to speed in a couple of months before they started filming. And these guys were, I mean, they were going under and filming scenes for five minutes at a time. That's insane. But that's also, it also explains how they were able to capture this. Her, look, first of all, look at the emotion here. There is no Uncanny Valley in this film. There's never any Uncanny Valley stuff going on in an Avatar film, but this is just taking it to the next level. This woman right here, which by the way is their daughter, She's exploring. This is just her full on exploring. Watch the smile, pay attention. The mouth is one of the hardest things to get right in CG. And it is one of the dead giveaways that something is CG, but watch her smile here. That is full on wonder and awe. Like she is in awe and that is just a genuine look of just wow, she is, Whatever she's looking at, that is actually making her happy and that's making me happy. Oh my goodness. So much detail going on here too. So one of the cool things to me, check out these arachnid robots that they got running around building everything. You got one over here, you got one right here. There's one up here, uh, one over here, um, a bunch of them over here. These are basically the worker bees. You can see one walking around back here too. These are the worker bees uh, in terms of building what I'm assuming is the an encampment, so to speak, 
for farming or protecting or even building their own army. And you've got all these human beings here. So one of the things I'm also thinking is that we have formed some kind of alignment with the humans. I think I think I'm a Navi. <laughs> I always find myself in alignment with the Navi and it's us versus the humans. Just gonna have to roll with that. But um, I think we might be in alignment with the human beings and we're building some kind of base where the humans can kind of come here and work out of and thrive, which I think is a great idea. I also love that you see these two guys right here. Um, check out this mech that this dude is using. So and this allows them to see eye to eye with the humans. But you could just see that guy walking and that's very cool. Walking around in that mech pointing and everything else. And I love how it mir mirrors him at a one to one ratio. But if you pay close attention, you can see that the mech does lag slightly. It's kind of like a, it's not that delayed, but there is a slight delay, which I love because that means that the mech has to interpret the thought and it's come down to a millisecond of a difference, but like it's pretty much real time mimicry. But the fact that the team thought about should there be a little bit of lag because it's functioning off of their thought process is just a fantastic detail. Look at that. Very cool. Um, and one more thing I want to point out. The reason James Cameron's films are the only ones that seem insane in 3D is because most films go through a process called 3D conversion. And that's where they shoot the film in 2D and then they, in post-production, they send it out to a house that, um, usually they send it out to a house that specializes in 2D to 3D conversion. Artists, individual artists can do it for smaller projects like I myself, I know how to 3D convert. But no matter how good you are at doing 3D conversion, it will never look as good as a film directed for 3D. This is another thing this, this shot demonstrates. You see this guy right here? You see this right here? You see them right here? You see all of this right here? All of this right here? All of that right there? And what's going on back there? Those are all layers of 3D. Jim has this in mind, guaranteed. When you see this shot in 3D in the theater, it's going to blow you away. And here's the thing. When you watch films that are converted for 3D or the way most directors who even if they shoot in 3D, the way they're thinking is things pop out. That's not how Jim thinks about 3D. He doesn't want things to pop out at the audience. If they do, they do. But the real trick of it, what makes 3D look so insane in his films is that things go in, they go back. There is a depth going into the background. That's what makes his films look so insane. It's like looking through a fucking window and it is, it's so magical, but let's move on. Oh my God. So this just further confirms to me, uh, they are building up a true city for, uh, legal aliens. I would, I would think is what the humans are. Um, immigrants, basically legal aliens coming and living and thriving on Pandora. It even looks, if you look in the distance, it looks like they're building out a complete city for them. And over here, I would assume is kind of a, an army base of sorts. I want to say, and I'm now there's two ways, there's two ways this can go, right? There's two ways this can go either. And I'm being optimistic, obviously, either what I'm saying is correct. And this is all for the, us to work together with the humans. And this is the army base that is protecting Pandora from hostile aliens who come to the planet. Or it's the other thing, which I don't want to think about. I don't want that to be what it is. But this could be the other thing, which is humans came here, built this area with the specific uh, their whole point in building this area could be to terrorize the Navi and to take over Pandora. I don't want that to be what this is because it, it symbolizes unity if it's the other thing. But if it's if it's that thing, well, fuck, man. <laughs> 
Also, notice that these are, and this is the reason that I feel that way. If you look at the windows, this is clearly a much stronger reinforced glass. If you go back and watch 2009's Avatar, then you know that those arrows are long as shit. The arrows that the Navi use primarily for their weapons are long as shit, they're poisonous, and they are strong. And they, if you, if you shoot one of these windows at the proper angle, there's enough force for it to pierce straight through that window and kill the pilot or any passengers that happen to be uh, sitting in the wrong place. These windows are clearly reinforced. They've learned their lesson. And that part is the reason that I'm a little bit concerned that it's the other thing and that this is not a base that is in harmony with the, uh, with the Navi, which by the way, if that's true, then that also means if that is true, that also means these guys might be bad guys. They may have created their own avatars for humans to jump into and work against the Navi using their bodies. And if that's the case, this could very well be our, our big main baddie, which, yeah. I love this shot. Again, the curiosity on their faces. And right here, don't know if you guys recognize them or not. Right here. Y'all recognize who that is? I'm not going to give that one away, but do a little do a little research, do a quick Google. You'll see that somebody is back that you probably didn't expect to come back. It's the only hint I'm giving you, but look close at that face. And look how hostile he is at him. There's a couple other, there's a couple other interesting clues there. Also, by the way, um, you know, I'm not going to say anything about that either. What I was about to say, there's some, there's some surprises that should stay surprises, even though they're revealing it in this trailer It's for the diehards. I don't want to say much, but I also recognize who this is and he's a new character, but I recognize the actor playing him, and I don't know if any of you are familiar with the cast yet, so I'm not going to say anything, but yeah. God, I love the intensity there. Now, one thing I want to point out from a visual effects perspective, and this happens so quick that you may not even notice it, but when, right here, when the camera first goes, it's panning really fast to get up to that shot. The amount of detail paid or the amount of attention to detail paid for that shot to look as realistic as it did with two full blown Navi in the background, as well as that forest with this kid blended into it in terms of the digital nature of all of this. The way that the digital lens acts like that is a reality in the background is just I can't explain to you guys how mind blowing that really is. Because the camera is, it's a, it's a whip pan. It's a very messy whip pan. And that background is reacting so perfectly to that lens. When I look at this shot, a big part of me wants to say that this particular lens right here, it looks like a th something between a 35. I think it's a 35 they're shooting this particular shot with. And the way that it behaves is just so... <laughs> God, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay, hang on, hang on, because this is all just orgasm city right here. Hang on one second. I love the camera angles being used underwater here. Also, look at the detail here. Her foot is flexing, which is causing her calf muscle to be flexed upward. 
if you put your foot on the ground right now and you, and you push your tippy toes, stand on your tippy toes kind of, but push down and watch your calf muscle and see how, how, it, uh, how it kind of flexes, that's exactly what's going on here in her calf muscles. And it's just, again, little details like that are just insane. Also, the way the water, the shadow is coming up, the light is refracting off of the surface of the water and bouncing off of this critter. It's very cool. Oh my God, and these camera angles. I feel like this one is shot with a, uh, it looks a little rounded, but it's not too far off of a 35. I'd say that might even, that might be like a, it could be a 24. The way it's fish-eyed just a little bit, but it's beautiful. And then this right here, oh my God. <laughs> Bruh, the details are just incredible. Look, even they're blown away. They live here and they're blown away. <laughs> Maybe they're discovering this for the first time. I love this imagery so much. Even though this, this kind of reversed valley arc situation here in the rock formation doesn't complete the arc, doesn't complete the full circle, this kind of solar eclipse happening in the background does. And that imagery is, is just so enchanting. It is so fucking beautiful, man. And this water, don't even, we haven't even talked, we talked a little about, we talked about motion capture in the water, but we haven't discussed the actual water. Like, look at this. Just, just look at it. Take a gander. Moving on. Oh my God. Oh, oh. Look at the light refracting through the earlobe. Just like real human ear, like, bro. It's like real human ears. Like the way, I don't know if you guys really ever paid attention to light because maybe you're not interested in all of that kind of stuff, but you'll note, you see that right there? Watch my earlobe. You see how the light goes through the back of my ear? Very cool, right? That's what's happening here <laughs> on this digital made up creature. The light is reflecting, refracting off of a digital made up creature right now. And that's insane. Look at this. And over here too, different depths of refraction. And why? Because his head is causing the light to hit this ear differently than it's hitting this ear. And that is just the dumbest thing I've ever seen in CG. Like this is insanity. She's not even the same color as them because she's catching a harsher light over here. And it's, it's a harsher, it's not, I'm sorry, it's a harsher, I shouldn't use the word harsh, it's a stronger but warmer angle of light. And that's why her, her skin color is softened up right there. And then look at her, she's clearly in the shadows. Like there's just, oh God, the detail, man, the detail, I can't even. And I have a theory about these dots that go across their bodies at this point. I have a theory about them. I could be wrong, but a part of me feels like they're tat, I don't know if they're tattooing or they're born with it, but they feel like star constellations. And I wonder if each tribe or each family within each tribe has their own star chart almost. It's very interesting stuff. and. I do want to explore that more. And this shot, okay. Okay. That woman is just in that room. She She's just in that room. I, You cannot convince me otherwise. This is just some alien woman that they hired to be in the film. I, I, I do not know how else to explain this this is exquisite this is exquisite it's literally I, I think i used that word maybe once in my life when i learned it but this just this literally just made me say exquisite that's how insane it is again <laughs> stressed as fuck <laughs> they are just going through a thing these navi have had a day <laughs> obviously but the way the light is bouncing off of her and it's, it's in the next shot too. And it's even more pronounced here. Like, uh, and this, look at this. 
Do you, are you seeing the soft focus happening right here? Because her eye is, you notice that the eyelids are sharp. And then this is out of focus a bit. And then the actual pupil right here is out of focus. That's because the camera at this particular moment in time, the depth is actually completely in focus with this particular point on her face. When I say that their cameras are, their digital cameras are so on point, I don't know how else to explain that. I mean, it behaves so accurately to an actual camera and I just, I cannot stop being blown away by it. Look at those teeth. Look at her teeth and then look at mine. Look at my teeth. Now look at hers. Now back to me. Now back to her. Me again. Now her. We both have the same teeth. That girl has a real mouth. That, that's just a real mouth. And her consolation, her star chart is absolutely beautiful. I love her star chart. That is just gorgeous. And I love her braids. Her braids are so cute. And I like how her braids are incorporated with where the bead uh, where the bead is hanging right here. This actually, this imagery right here reminds me, I don't know how many of you are 80s babies, but this imagery right here reminds me a lot of The NeverEnding Story, which was a story about a boy named Atreyu and the princess that he is rescuing. She has a, uh, it's not with her hair, but she has this kind of uh, this jewelry headband thing that she wears, and this reminds me a lot of that. I really like it. I do not care what anybody says. If you didn't tell someone that this was the trailer from Avatar and you showed them this imagery, they would literally assume this was a surfer and a well, just some species they've never seen before, and that this was just some kind of surfing documentary that you were showing them on Netflix or some shit. That, everything about this shot, the fogginess, the light refraction, the way the sun is broken up in the sky, the way we lose detail, the further in front of the sun this particular fin is. The only sharp area is over here. There's so, there's just, it, it's just so fucking beautiful, man. Okay. So, she is obviously pregnant. <laughs> I don't know if anybody caught on to that. I don't know their cycles, but this looks to be about the beginning of the third trimester. So she's due. <laughs> she's due. She might be having this baby during the film. I'm not sure. I love how they have the fire inside of these, uh, these seashell type deals. I, I just love everything about this. And again, with the freaking water and the lighting, like everything just looks so sacred. That's the word. Everything looks so sacred. It's just so beautiful. I love the the lighting coming up off of the water, bouncing off of them. That blue, that kind of blue evanescence green uh, algae glow. So pretty. Y'all know who that is yet? Everything on Pandora wants to eat your eyes for jujubes. I'm not saying anything else. Wow. Okay. This shot we got to talk about. If there's one thing James Cameron is going to do in all of his films, it's make sure somebody is escaping a shit ton of water down a corridor. 
and boy does he shoot that better than anybody else the weight of these cg creatures in this scene is mind-boggling to me and that's another thing that makes cg characters look real versus not is getting the weight correct a lot of characters look very floaty they don't look like they're there because the 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 weight isn't right and it's not just a setting it's not just saying okay gravity is affecting this thing it has to literally affect that thing down to the molecule the impacts the the points of contact where their hands are touching surfaces when if, when i do this there's a lot of things that happen you can see the muscles tightening up in my arm right here you can see that bone work going on underneath you see all these you see all those veins and those the cartilage and the bone work happening anytime you move your hand it is insane how robotic we look sometimes that is holy hell that is so hypnotic anyways sorry i have adhd if you guys didn't know um but pay attention to all of that because what happens is when i touch a surface if i impact a surface that impacts everything happening all the way through and even up here and up here when you press on something your shoulder your shoulder muscles tense it like there's so much that 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 visually cues the weight of a thing watch their bodies as they tumble down this corridor oh my goodness the weight is just insane and by the way that water is not real by the way Probably none of this shot is real. None of anything that we've seen outside of human beings is real, I'm guessing. I'm, I bet you it's all shot in a warehouse using the an upgraded version of the technology that James Cameron invented for the first one. And literally nothing we've seen in this outside of the human beings is real. And, and that to me is insane. Look at this water and look at their weight. Look at the points of contact. You see their hands. You see the weight of her, like how her hair is being affected in a different way. How her hand is bracing right here as she slides down. How she's trying to hold her positioning, but she can't because of the force of the water and whatever this is is sinking. And she catches her daughter. Like this, all of this is just, and the speed with which she whipped around and looked right there, it's, look at this, the, the hair, the way the hair is flipping back. They're human, they're real. Can't convince me otherwise. Incredible, just incredible. And this camera angle, that little flip with the uh, camera right here, is so that's just so damn gorgeous. And the way they're floating right here, and this gets me so damn hyped up, this part right here. Ooh, look at all the, look at this. All the vein work, because again, he's tight, he's gripping, he's tightening. You see how those those veins and all the strain that happens in your fist when you're tightening? Look at look at what's going on right here as he tightens. Look at what's going on right here as he holds. Those are all visual cues that something is real. Did you see did you see how those veins popped out of his hand right there? Watch it one more time. Watch the veins pop out when he tightens. Right there. Oh my god. Whew. This shot right here. Fam. Fam. I don't care if you're a 12 year old boy. I don't care if you're a 21 year old girl. I don't care if you're a 45 year old adult. I don't care if you're an 80 year old senior citizen. The imagery here is absolutely insane. A man, or in this case, a Navi, willing to fight for everything that matters to him. He's got his weapons of choice right here. This crazy pickaxe that I think is going to be integral to the final battle, which I think this is the beginning of the final battle. He's got this, uh, you know, this, I think actually this is his first weapon of choice and this is the secondary for him. But then also the fact that he's on the back of this winged fish <laughs> what a winged crocodile fish ah. 
<laughs> this is just this is shit that goes on inside of the mo- the imagination of like an eight year old. So cool. And and y- enough cannot be said about the fucking water. Look at that. The water effects there are just insane. And one more point of water. I'm sitting here trying to point it. Look at the the shallow water right here and how it's different from this water. Like all the little shallow water. Oh my god. That is crazy. That is so crazy. Like the way everything is impacted. And look at this little this water dripping off of his hand right here. This water is flowing over this and down into there. It's being sucked in literally by the the, the forces. There's drag underneath that one little part right here that's pulling that water in and it's dripping off of his hand right here. <sighs> Last time. Look at that. <laughs> I can't. I can't, y'all. Again with the lighting. It's incredible. It is incredible. Now, I know I mostly talked about visual effects, but you got to understand, like, as a film, as I'm like, I'm, an, I'm primarily an actor, as many of you probably know by now. Um, if you want to know more about the work I've done or whatever, you can Google my real name. Um, but as a filmmaker and as a visual effects artist, and as a um, as a music artist, the combination of visuals and sound and the direction of everything in this teaser trailer is just it's just mind blowing. I don't I don't know what else to say. I'm really happy that I finally filmed this video though because now I can watch this thing a thousand times just over and over again. Um, I'm sure if you go through the comment section on this video on the, the main avatar channel, I'm sure that the comment section is probably glowing in similar ways, even if they're not able to express it the way I do. I'm sure everyone is just insanely excited about this project. And I'll talk about the avatar effect in one of the videos next week, which is avatar week on my channel. So next week, like I said, I'll be releasing a lot of avatar videos focused on avatar specifically. And, um, yeah. All right. That's, (laughs) I am so blown away, amazed. I'm in my feelings. I'm in my thoughts. I'm emotional right now. So I'm going to get out of here, but Thank you for joining me for this reaction video to the trailer. And I honestly thought this video was going to be like six or seven minutes, but it probably isn't. (laughs) I'm sorry for that, but okay. Anyways, the movie looks incredible and that is that. I won't keep you any longer. (laughs) All right, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.